topic of uh, the Occupy movement, movement has uh, resurfaced again. It seemed to have uh, gone dormant for a while, but I guess spring is starting to show up. It's not as cold anymore. Um, I don't know. People are starting to talk about the Occupy movement and what it meant. and Some people are starting to call for it to start happening again. Some of the people on the, on the right of the spectrum, the political spectrum, are still saying that they don't understand what uh, the Occupy movement stood for and what they were trying to get across or what they were trying to say. And they're still kind of pointing a finger at them and saying that they were never really clear with their point. All they are is a bunch of people that are mad and, uh, you know, down with the system and it's broken and, you know, it's time to change everything and, you know, uh, kind of hinting that they want to go to a completely socialist, government-run type of nanny state. Um, but my view on it is a little bit different. I, I mean, I, I do feel that they were a little bit vague in what they were trying to get at, because I don't think they knew exactly what um, was wrong. They just knew something was wrong with the system. And I think that was their point. They wanted to draw attention to um, our political and our, our financial institutions um, so that we would have a closer look at how they're being run and uh, fix it or try and fix it or make some change or make a significant change um, that would correct all the... I mean, there's very obvious that there are people in positions of power that are abusing that power. And uh, I think that's where the change... Personally, that's where I think the change needs to come, to come from. My response is that we need to clearly state what the expectations of conduct are and uh, hold, hold people and corporations accountable. And, you know, if uh, that doesn't happen, then we need to turn around and hold the government accountable for not doing their part and ensuring best practices and, uh, you know, basically fair play is done. Uh, anyway, so I think that the uh, Occupy movement and what I feel is the statement they were making and, and changes that need to be made also tie into the other topics that are being talked about right now. I think a lot of the problems with the, uh, the Occupy movement is that there's a sense of entitlement uh, that some people feel towards the just lifestyle in general. Um, there was comments made about uh, young, able-bodied people uh, choosing welfare over a minimum minimum wage employment. Uh, why work when you can get it for free was kind of the attitude. And, um, one of the talk shows said he had overheard that a year or two ago uh, when they were at a mall. Maybe they were sitting having a coffee or whatever. Um, you know, and heard a couple of young guys saying, hey, let's... Uh, let's go get some jobs for the summer, and the other guy laughing, yeah, right, you know, we're just going to go on welfare and party all summer until we go to college, you know. Um, I don't know that we'll ever correct that other than, you know, make it harder for them to do it, you know, make it less, not harder to get it, but um, I don't know, less attractive for them, I guess, to... Uh, go sit on welfare for a summer instead of going and getting a job, you know, so, you know, to maybe make welfare about 60% of what minimum wage is, and yes, I know that will affect a whole bunch of people uh, that can't do anything about it, um, but I'm just saying we need to put it at 60% to where it is and take the other 40% and maybe put that into the, the other more special interests, like for the people that need the welfare and you know that is their only means because some people are not able to hold a job um, that pays minimum wage or better you know they might be able to get a job and hold it for a little while but because of health issues or maybe mental issues or addiction issues or any of those type of things 
uh, they're un unable to maintain or to keep um, that job. And I mean, so increase the, the benefit, like decrease the, the welfare amount that you get and just in, in, make increases to the other programs so that we don't have people falling through the cracks uh, and we can make up the difference of what they are currently getting um, with the, the special programs that uh, helps them directly. You know, so that those who are truly in need of the assistance, so that we're helping those who truly need the assistance and deter the ones who are abusing the system. Uh, quite, a, quite a few of the people that are graduating from college and university um, they seem to have an expectation of going directly from being a college student in, you know, say in January to having a, like a six-figure salary come June. You know, um, does it happen? Well, of course it does. There are certain careers that, uh, you know, there is a high demand, so they will have those openings. But will every single person who takes that course get that? No. Most people are going to start out in an entry-level position. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to work for minimum wage and make 20 grand a year. You know, um, a lot of college employ uh, education gets your foot in the door at a higher pay grade than minimum wage. But there's all kinds of different uh, credentials that you can go and get and all these credentials really do you know um, they get your foot in the door they give you a leg up over the competition that's also applying for those jobs uh, that say you know what I already have the education to back that up I know the expectations and I already have some training in that area um, I'm the person that you should hire for that job instead of somebody that's maybe really eager, uh, really out of, you know, straight out of high school, or maybe has kind of worked in that field a little bit but doesn't have any formal training. Um, you know, getting the college education gives you a leg up, and that's all it really does. It gets your foot in the door. It gives you a leg up on other people that are maybe already there that got in through, you know, in a business business setting, if somebody started out in the mail room or, or as a clerk or whatever, um, and I'm not saying a clerk as in a position, I'm just saying like a frontline person that answers phones and that type of thing, and they've worked their way into a position, somebody coming out of college might start above where that person is currently working. Uh, it's just the way it is. So they might be actually competing for the same job, uh, and it should give you a bit of a leg up as in, you've put the work in, invested time and money, and, it, and, and employers take that into account. So, but even that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the position over somebody that's already got a proven work ethic with the company uh, and a proven track record. That doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get passed over because somebody with a college education has applied. So, it does go both ways. At least my my take on it, or my my opinion on the entitlement issue, is um, that the entitlement stems from kids not knowing or being. Jesus, we have a bumpier road, please. Kids not knowing or being aware that. I mean, not not everybody succeeds. Not everybody wins at life. You know. Um, yeah, it's not fair. Get over it. You know. <laughs> I mean, I was doing well in one career. I hit a brick wall that I couldn't get through. I had to quit and cold turkey go start all over again uh, in another career. Has it worked well for me? Yeah, you know, but I didn't start out where I am now. I mean, I started out, well, minimum wage was lower back then, but that was 12 years ago I started over again. 12, 14 years? Yeah, it might have been 14 years ago now. But I started all over again, and I was working. I started as an apprentice at 8 bucks an hour. You know, like, we start apprentices now at $17 an hour. Like, it, 
I didn't get to that wage until I was a fourth year apprentice. You know, so <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people look down their nose a little bit at the trades and stuff because, well, it's not technically a college education, even though we do go to college uh, two months for for the four first three years and then three months for the fourth year of our, our apprenticeships to become a journeyman. Uh, at least that's the elect, electrical trade, and I'm pretty sure pipe fitting uh, is that way. I'm not sure about all the other trades, but people put in the af- extra effort and uh, do that unasked task uh, when they see it means doing. Show up for work every on time every day. Uh, those are the people that end up winning. You know, I. Uh, I don't know how many people I've actually said that you don't have to be the very best person. Like in my trade, oh, I'm an electrician. You don't have to be the best electrician to get ahead, to get move up, you know, to become one of the preferred employees. I'm not even going to say move up in pay scale or anything, but once you're in the preferred or in the inner circle, as people would say, um, all you have to be is reliable. You know, don't be one of those guys that goes out on. <clears throat> payday Friday gets so tanked over the weekend they're still sick Monday and don't show up you know and then you're good for a few more days and then you go out and party again that guy does not get carried to the next job unless we need him very badly you know those are the people that tend to get laid off and go from job to job to job and that's why when employers are looking if you've worked at 10 different jobs in the last year or even 5 different jobs in the last year it tends to be a bit of a knock towards you because it says something about your reliability. If you were reliable, why didn't somebody keep you? you know, it's a little different when you're in the trades because different aspects of the trades, sometimes you get to the end of the job and everybody gets laid off and then everybody gets gets to go through the process of finding their own new job. I know with our company, what we're trying to do is as the job is coming to an end, we like to post up the other opportunities it's not like we only have one job on the go at a time. We usually have about 10 at a time on the go at various stages. So we like to post up, okay, when this job is done on, say it's done on the, at the end of the month, you know, you have the opportunity to go to this job, this job, this job. It's up to you. Come and talk to us about where you would like to go if you'd like to stay with the company. And that's how we retain our people. You know, do we lose people? Sure we do. You know, people still don't necessarily trust that system and go, well, you're just shuffling me off or whatever, and they go find their own opportunity. Or maybe the opportunities they post up aren't close enough to the, where they live or they want to work with their buddy who is over at a different job with a different company. That does happen. But we do try to retain our people that way. And we need, as parents, we need to take this stuff seriously because essentially the problems that we're having with all the... Um, the expectations and, and, you know, some people are saying that, you know, all young people are all slackers and it's our own damn fault because we didn't instill the values in them. We didn't tell them that this is what the expectations are and it's not acceptable to just coast, you know, to be a burden on society and let other people who are working hard and paying taxes carry your weight for you. That, to me, is not acceptable. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I have my own consequences that I instill into my kids. You can choose whatever you choose. Society has consequences, even though they're not written in laws. Um, you know, people always complain, well, how come this guy or that guy got the promotion? Because he deserved it. Just because you've been there for 10 years plodding along, doing the minimum expectations in your job, not messing up, but not going, doing anything extra to make sure that things are done right or in a timely manner or trying to figure out a more efficient way to do things, just because you've not screwed up doesn't mean somebody else hasn't gone above and beyond that's only been there for a year or two, you know, and there's there are those attitudes of, well, you you know, the new guys always come in and make us look bad. No, no, uh, 
you have been there for a long period of time and have got complacent in your job, make yourself look bad. Get off your ass and do your job. If you want to get ahead, work hard at it. You know, put some effort into your into your job. Take some pride in your work, and it will get noticed. You know, it may not get noticed right away. You know, um, yes, you can blow your own horn and say, "Hey, I want you to come and look and see what I've done." But if you do that too often, you'll become the kind of the, the going joke in the office or in the in the work job site. You know, so it it's better to just let your actions speak for you. People will notice. You know, every time Bob goes out and does that, we never have an issue. You know, and I go and look at it, and it's all we've done just the way I want it. I never have to go back to it. Bob's going to get the next promotion, right? Whereas Joe, eh, every once in a while, we have to go back and fix stuff. But, you know, for the most part, he does his job. Yeah, well, he's probably not going to be the one that gets ahead. He'll be working below Bob. So, anyway, I think I've blabbed enough about uh, what I was listening to on the radio, and I've actually gone a little bit further. So, anyway, that's uh, my political rant, or my, yeah, I guess it's kind of political for today. Hope you guys have a good week. Talk to you later.